to my other uh, other part of the introduction is uh, that uh, I am also coordinator innovation and incubation in Jawaharlal Nehru University and looking after and trying to establish um, uh, uh, Atal Incubation Center in JNU. That's the, that is the part of Atal Innovation Mission by Government of India and established by Niti Aayog. So we've been granted for rupees 10, um, 10 crores for the next five years to establish the startups and promote entrepreneurship. So this is my other half of the introduction. So uh, without wasting much time, since the connection is a bit unstable and, uh, and the time is precious, so I would like to start with, uh, um, my talk is basically on economic reforms. Let me be very honest with you. I am uh, not an economist to, uh, to comment on any of the policies or anything, but yes, I am looking after the policy initiatives and other aspects where we, how we can promote entrepreneurship and the startup events uh, um, in different fields. So uh, my talk is basically on the startups and how this could change uh, the level of uh, uh, socioeconomic context. Uh, we can bring in with the, that uh, uh, the startup activity, which is government of India is promoting at that sense. So let me start up with the, what kind, what is actually a startup? Uh, the thing is, wherever I have gone, people talk about startup, but they don't understand what ex exactly the startup means. So uh, the overall definition of the startup is basically startup is a venture uh, that is started, uh, that starts with an idea. And idea is not exactly, it means that it's all about market or what it sells. It could be an idea or a potential solution to a problem which exists in the society. So uh, any, anyone who sees some kind of problem in society and try to solve these problems can make a startup. So idea becomes the centralized part of any startup and which is transformed into a significant business opportunity. So what is important over here is that how idea is matured to become a business opportunity and hence it could be used as an as a as a work out to solve some kind of maybe simple or maybe a complex problem. So that is a startup. But when actually it gets start? So uh, it starts with the, as I have told you, with an Ji, I'm sorry to say your voice is absolutely and unstable. Or a meaningful problem. That means trying to solve up any problem. Or it cannot make any... Uh, what does it require? That means a set of people who can we try again to work. Is this fine now? No. Uh, I don't know what to do. <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, it's still unstable, uh, little bit better now. Okay. Coming back to, uh, things, uh, startup requires a team and a team can be of different expertise coming together on a single platform to solve that problem or to make that idea into some business module. That means this team has a shared vision and that shared vision is basically transformed into some kind of reality. So this is the idea when some things transform into a business opportunity. Now, the thing is everyone calls something like a company and a uh, what actually it matters for a startup? For a startup, the 
to calculate the impact of the startup it requires to understand if that startup is impacting its customer or society or not so this is very important part of it so whenever we call some company a great company we call in different parameters and these parameters are that it is not run by a single individual but by a team but a, but a strategist who can think to solve some kind of a problem it has all the necessary knowledge of the problem values strategies that's the permanent part of any company if it is existing in that way it can become a big and a great company now this team basically contributes to the vision of existence operate to improve and build value for customers and basically in the financial terms if we talk about it's not about satisfying only in terms of money but it's all about giving a satisfaction to the customer as well so indian economy of the la of the late has been working out this startup policy when prime minister announced the startup policy on january 15 2016 and the whole ambition of the uh, startup india was to fulfill an ambitious movement where to aim to fill up the gaps in indian economy of growth and development so digital india became one of the boost to such kind of setup and government has created 10000 crores funds of funds of which 2500 crores released are released every way, every year and that actually start uh, is given for the supporting various startups now what does it require actually what are the changes which has which government has brought in and these changes are basically about the registration of the company that which actually took 1500 days to set up one registered company now that now it can be done in one day legal support fast tracking examination tax exemptions and other policy initiatives were taken by the government that means a company can self certify themselves and uh, there is a exit policy been defined for every startup that means now it's easier to make a company add a value to the company go for agglomeration or merger of the company or acquisition of the company and thereby earning a revenue and creating a full value product for society or for the market or for the customer so this is basically the idea of startup india by january 2020 uh by this is government records from the niti ayog 27000 startups have been recognized in 551 districts of which 55% are in tier 1 cities and amazingly 45% of these startups are actually in tier 2 or tier 3 cities so now you can imagine the impact of this policy change which has brought up a large amount of uh, 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 indian generation new generation people to bring up they are own startups and solve various problems of society in a larger context so indian economy is now largely looking after the new boom of the startup world where a founding of startup is not enough anyone can found a startup anyone can make up a startup and the main question lies the success of the startup lies on the amount of funding it gets from the market that means the number of investment rounds it makes through the more is the uh, the base of the company among the customer the goodwill of the company is there in the in the customer or the market the better is the chances of getting investment so thereby they create a value product for example everyone has heard about byju's it is a, a one of the uh, 
early startups which has become a unicorn in online education space today the worth of this company the valuation of this company is basically 5.5 billion dollars now you can imagine the amount of change 2011 this company was founded by a former school teacher and who was thinking that how he can initiate an education initiative which can reach to the masses even if schools are not present so this venture went through seven rounds of funding and the customer base of this company is basically 35 billion subscribers at this time up till today and it's hugely profitable and by 2018 their revenue had reached to 200 million dollars so you can think of now they are coming in from the digital space to the physical space as well so let me take you through the journey of the startups in india how this journey has taken place so i'll take you along that what has changed because of the startup policies which government has framed now when you see the history of startups they uh, it is considered that there are three bigger waves which has actually made happen this startup initiatives very uh, working out in Indian context. The first phase or the first wave which we call is the information technology phase where large amount of companies are coming in IT space. When we, when we talk about IT space, then there are a lot of companies which are working in IT sectors like TCS, Wipro, uh, these all companies jumped in and create a whole plethora of products and services. That means these are predominantly devised by technological initiative. So if you look after what kind of companies which came into this phase are basically like Big Basket, which is an online grocery uh, uh, company, Book My Show, which is off what kind of companies which came into this phase in ticketing initiatives, CureFit, health and fitness initiatives, delivery, which is an online delivery platform, e-commerce platform for delivering various products, and uh, MobiQuick, or digital payment services, and something like that. So all these companies came into this phase. So what, what is basically the idea which actually came into this kind of, so they are largely using technological platform or IT spaces to create their market for themselves. So if we look culturally, how India is divided, then we could look at that we are basically of entrepreneurial in nature. We are devised historically that we are risk traders and we take risk and try to create value products. So earlier it was devised by the family owned businesses. So that was one thing which was actually taken aback like uh, most of the startups where everybody was asking where is the money to create any company but now this is not required and this IT technology this information technology has changed these things quite a bit where these engineers were coming out of fresh uh, engineers were coming out of various engineering colleges they don't require uh, money or capital to start their initiatives a single room some sort of programmers with a good amount of idea and a technological base work can let them go so this technology initiatives completely shifted the family business or the traditional business setup into a very small 10 by 10 or 15 by 10 square feet of rooms creating some brilliant unicorns so that was uh, basically the first wave which actually created lot pools lot of pools of uh, new startups and this first wave of IT took almost 25% of engineering graduates to their phone so that's why the whole framework shifted and that is the change which was brought in 
in the Indian students that they are now started assuming that they can create companies, they can create some value products or services. Now this, every, since every field has some saturation, at some point of time, there are a lot of IT companies which is on the, on the board. Now the second wave of this uh, startup activity started around about 2013 to 14. And this base was consumerism. That means consumer driven market started working out. Now, what is a consumer driven market? Now, if you look at the per capita income of individuals in country, it was realized that there's large amount of uh, citizens of this country who have got expendable income. That means they can expend on various needs. And the policy of liberalization infrastructure more capital was becoming available to these customer bases. So therefore, in that phase, middle class, especially middle class of this country, became a bit of higher income individuals who can consume more, use smartphones, and access the internet for their usages. And therefore, the product become available and cheaper to them. So these models, these IT models get shifted into developing a business models named as e-commerce platforms. And they are specialized in retail marketing, hyper delivery networks, and organizing in unorganized sectors. Now, if we look at what kind of companies came in these wave, so you, some of the 25 unicorns came up in this, and unicorns like Ola, Twiggy, Zomato, Paytm, Flipkart, they all came in the phase where the consumer became their market base. Now, when consumer became a buyer, there was a need to give this capital uh, initiative a new dimension. That means giving a customer a new kind of scenario where they, they are given an opportunity to choose among the best. And again, technology comes to the, came to the rescue. Henceforth, the third wave of the startup initiated. The third wave was of, is considered as innovation curve. Now, what is this innovation curve? Innovation curve started that people started realizing that there is not a requirement for traditional type of marketing strategy or traditional type of IT platforms or technology platforms to solve some kind of problem. So they started innovating and these innovation came into FinTech, that means financial technologies, marketing technologies. So these are all B2B models, that means business to business models. And they are driven by deep technologies and intellectually property driven innovations. Now, let me give you a very common example, which you might have observed that in Amazon, if we search something, it starts giving some kind of ideas that you might be looking for this as well. So suddenly you realize, oh, I require this as well. Now, how this was devised? This was based on deep technologies, artificial intelligence. So all these technology platforms, e-commerce platforms started shifting themselves to deep technologies to understand their consumer base. So that started the third wave that is called as innovation phase. And since India has got a huge platform on IT services, business process outsourcing. So the India actually became the hub of research and development in these IT sectors. And to tell you, over 1200 multinational R&D centers were established in India till date. So you can think this innovation wave has actually benefited a country in a larger context. And these innovation created 
entire product lines and unique products that was designed, developed, and de delivered in India. So that actually worked out a different zones of the startup initiatives. Slowly, we can see the change that Indian startups were started moving up in the intellectual ladders. Because now we are not very traditional thinking about what is existing, but we started thinking in terms of innovation, started in thinking, devising some new strategies. So the Me Too, Me Too event in the industry happened in the consumer phase. Now, let me tell you, this is not that Me Too, which is actually related to some kind of controversy. Me Too happens means that the product existing, it's somewhere else in the country, in the world, should also be devised in India. No, they started customizing these product lines with respect to the Indian market. So the whole gamut of product which was present in US, Europe or any other country started coming to India. And this was devised, this strategy was devised by the people who actually started working in the Silicon Valley and other countries started moving back to the country. They led this innovation strategies. And the best part is they created a product oriented mindset in the generations where earlier it was a mindset only, which is a service based. I'm sorry to say Infosys, Wipro earlier working in IT spaces and e-commerce e platforms were actually service based. And India required a manufacturing base. India requires a new product lines for its own, uh, for the world to be shown into. Now the people who came back from Silicon Valley, US or Europe, parts of the Europe, they came with the experience of innovation and they brought the change in today's generation. In the innovation wave, almost 100 startups started coming up. And these old startups came into B2B, business to business marketplace in healthcare, enterprise related technology, robotics, financial technology, and like that, many more. So now we have more companies like Bank Bazaar, where it can strategize your thinking capability and gives you more option to choose. Med Genome, Black Buck, Robotics, Gray Orange Robotics. These all created new lines of services and products that is completely innovation based. Now, if we consider B2B in deep technology and IP led innovation, if we look at India's one of the uh, biggest innovation fund managers, Bharat Innovation Fund. So they have a companies like Entropic Technologies which uses the emotions and artificial intelligence to map the behavior of the persons, take the cues from EEG brainwave signals, facial expressions and eye tracking technologies for developing products and services. Detect Technologies, which is another company on their portfolio, came with the resistive sensors and signal processing for corrosion detection in oil refineries. So now you can see they have moved from consumer to developing solutions to various business initiatives. Zoho, everybody must be knowing it. Zoho and Freshworks were the unicorns which are leading the space from a small city, southern city of Chennai to developing a full official space so thereby giving solution to various businesses to start their own ventures. So currently there are 500 artificial intelligence startups in India at the moment. So we can say that riding on three waves, the startup ecosystem is firmly established and due to government initiatives, there are more, more than 300 incubators and accelerators being established where there are 30,000 
active startups are present at this moment. And if you look at economic perspective, up till 2018, the institutional venture capitalists have fused, have given, invested almost $4 billion in these startups. So you can see the amount of growing size of the startup ecosystem. Now, when we talk about all these startup activities which has been going on, so the, the question comes, how does it benefit the society? So before coming to the COVID or the pandemic scenario, I would like to highlight what is the advantage these startups brought to the society. First and the foremost thing, it gave an amount of respect to the society, to every individual in the society. Let me give you a very open example. It's very quotable. Everybody knows about Ola and Uber. Now what change this has brought, these companies has brought to the society. Now these companies has brought an amount of respect to these drivers. And earlier these drivers used to be little, you can, nobody wants to be called as a driver. Nobody wants to have uh, earlier people were not owning these vehicles. So they gave an option to loan these vehicles to them and became, this became a respectable job. Now, even uh, people from middle class, low middle class started gaining respect in the society thinking, oh, this is an, he's an Ola driver, which is now a mark of respect. That's the amount of change which has, this company has brought in. And these has also brought the competitive advantage in the society. Now we, now we, now we are not looking at the, uh, from the spectacles of caste, creed, religions or whatever. We don't ask anyone, but anyone can come into that space. Anyone can become a startup. Anyone can become an entrepreneur and gain that amount of respect in the society. So now we have no stratification left in the startup world in terms of caste or creed. And most importantly, earlier part of my lecture when I said that a team is very important, people started respecting each other's capabilities. So let, let, let us put the thought that if I want to create any startup, I would require a team with different setups. There must be some marketing person is required. There must be some technology person is required. There must be some uh, uh, financial person is required. And these startup initiatives don't ask from which background you came from. They only know the capabilities which is amounting in a person. That means this is a biggest socioeconomic change the startup community has brought into the society. It has also empowered the man or the common man of different strata and especially the women as well. Now, if you look at larger perspective, large number of women entrepreneurs have come up in startup world. I was reading some of the startup initiatives by some women in India in the food sector, the processed food sector, large amount of startups have started coming in and especially by women itself. Second type of initiatives which women have started coming in is the fashion industry, largely led by the women entrepreneurs. So they have empowered women to come in a big way and create their own niche in the society. Uh, I came uh, I, uh, it happened to, I met an uh, uh, entrepreneur from a Bangalore and he was a, just an 18 years old guy. Now, when I asked him what kind of startup he has, he told me that he has a startup which has an e-commerce platform and what he used to do is to bring the products from the rural background and from the villages and start selling them on the e-commerce platform. So the whole rural economy has started getting into the markets now. 
so it is not adding not only adding to the revenue of the individual who are running these startups but they are adding revenue to the national income as well now the government is more aligned to initiate more of the startups so that they can give it back to the society and the society and the networking of the society can happen from the rural to the urban urban to the rural so they can merge anywhere in terms of product in terms of services or in terms of networking for developing some sort of solutions to the society needless to mention these startup created many jobs if you look at ola and uber so you can see even swiggy zomato they have given jobs to scores and scores of people living and coming from different backgrounds even to the uh, even to the uh, people from uh, very very poor background as well so they are they have started getting jobs so there we can say there is a scope of re balanced regional development that means starting up new businesses industrial units amount of development which takes place within the some regions started coming up so the government has improved road railway airports electricity water supply so all these came into the hubs where the startups starting uh, getting uh, started getting into into the major initiatives the gdp and the per capita income is also started has also started increasing and especially contributed by msme sector and to tell you and these consist of at the moment these msme sector consist of 36 million units that produce employment for more than 80 million people and which accounts for 37% of country's gdp so you can see the amount of change this startup culture has brought in now let me before coming to other scenario there is a word which started moving in the startup world called as social entrepreneurship now almost all of the startups are based on the profit motive and thinking that they can capture money for not only for themselves but for their investors as well but social entrepreneurship came with a different knack these social entrepreneurships are not profit driven but yes sustainably driven that means they try to get into the profits only for sustainable mode and not for the profitable mode and the aim of the social entrepreneurship is basically to benefit large amount of people or society individuals or a region where there is a lack of penetration of advantage given by the government sector and the famous example which is a international example in terms of social entrepreneurship is mohammed yunus you might have heard about mohammed yunus who is a founder of gramin bank and considered as a father of micro credit system now what was it now if you look at that scenario where mohammed yunus has yunus has started this bank was basically the micro crediting the poor women or the people as low as 24 dollars so this kind of income was given uh, or the credit was given so when he started getting uh, getting it back it, he got more more motivated giving more such kind of loans or credits to the people thereby promoting entrepreneurship in them and the same thing happened in india as well called as bandhan bank these all initiatives are considered where the society driven needs devised some kind of entrepreneurship in individuals thereby benefiting the whole society now looking at a larger perspective up till 2019 a report by india us strategic and partnership forum suggested in next 5 years the startup sector in india would attract almost 21 billion dollars in investment and it might create 5 lakh 50000 direct jobs and 1 crore 400000 
indirect jobs. So you can see this, the change which has been uh, propagated for the next uh, five years. But a hiccup king, considered called as COVID-19. And these startups are badly hit. Let me tell you this very honestly. Considering because they need market to survive, they require capital flow to survive. They require cash flow to survive. But all of these got freezed. Very quickly, they have changed their modes. Some of the startups have started changing their modes, started working more on technology initiatives, coming back to the first wave, which we actually started. And large number of started, uh, startups started moving to the first wave which started connecting themselves with the technology and e-commerce platforms. And now the government has also started supporting them in bigger initiative. Let me tell you one very good example of a startup which actually happened in a village somewhere in Kerala. I met this guy. Now these are two IIT guys went to a village and started living in this village to see some kind of help or they can do something for this village. They realized that the children of these villages don't go to the schools. So they want them to teach, but nobody was interested in sending their, their kids to the school. So they came back to the town, brought some rechargeable lights from the, uh, from the market, some hundreds of them, and came back to the village. Now that they distributed these lights free of cost in these villages. And they asked their children and they, uh, when they, uh, they talked to the administration as well. And there was a school which was closed down and nobody used to go to that, uh, that building. So he requested for that building to be handed over and requested electricity department to give minimum three hours of electricity every day because there was no electricity in this village. So everybody started thinking why they require these uh, lights when there is no electricity, they cannot charge it. So they carefully devise a strategy and they requested the electricity department to give three hours of electricity in the school. Now they requested every parent of this, of this uh, village to send their wards to the school for three hours where they can charge these lights in school itself. So when they, when these kids uh, came to the school to charge their lights, three hours, there's a teaching for them and three hours is good enough for these lights to get recharged so that it can be used in the night for, uh, uh, for their households. So now there's a dual benefit and they charge one rupee every from everyone for these lights. So you can think, the amount of social entrepreneurship has brought two changes in the village. One, education to all the children. Second, the electricity to these households. And these are the examples of social entrepreneurship where they have changed the whole scenario of the village. Similarly, there is one more example. There was a guy which actually was a Silicon Valley guy, went into a village to see if he can bring some change. And he saw that there is a iron smith who used to pull these, uh, uh, the furnace, so to melt their irons and to make, uh, make utensils and whatever they require. And for that one person is engaged, that is usually their wives. And the children's are left uncared. So what he's devising a strategy, he devised a fan, which could be, uh, uh, which could be worked out with a pedal. So he gave it free of cost to these iron smiths and said, okay, you can, now you can use the pedal technique to fan up, uh, to work out this fan so that your furnace is continuously burning so that women get free to look after their children. And simultaneously women can also bring up some uh, venture like carpet weaving or anything else. So to bring more income. So this change has brought in that their kids are now cared and now go to the school. Women's are engaged in multiple activities 
of business and iron smiths are doing their as usual business now this change has brought the complete change in the village scenario and gave a upliftment to the villages now the social entrepreneurship let me let me caution you over here that is social entrepreneurship is not social activism it's not about creating some parallel notions of thinking in social activism it's all about giving respect and empowering them and make them self sustainable and self respectable individuals so this social entrepreneurship has brought this particular kind of change so it should not should not be confused with the term social activism it's not social activism it's all about empowering people so slowly and steadily government has started looking the startup initiatives which is coming out of technology platforms in applying in various scenarios like there are some startups which is coming in the uh Uh, uh which improves the lives of these uh, transporters the drivers which drives the trucks so it has the startup activity has now moved from a urbanized way of thinking to innovations which can solve other people's life so basically these startup activities the government has started working out uh home grown innovation they started promoting the home grown innovation so that they can solve the indigenous problems of the country and they started adapting to the changing markets as well and the biggest part of this home grown innovation is the training the educa education and to retain the talent in the country that be that became a biggest boom for the brand india so all i can say the quote from our honorable president shri ramnath kovind ji he said that it is very important for our country and society to strengthen economic democracy then we can strengthen the political democracy so political democracy can only become strong when there is a economic and social democracy and considering baba sahib thoughts on the startups that the education the technology the economics is for everyone and it should be equally um, uh, divided equally driven and equally developed and thereby the startup culture in india has given a realistic uh, view of the baba sahib's dream of equality therefore i end my thought and my talk over here thinking that the startup culture in india would change a socio economic uh, terrain of the country not only by empowering people but also give them a self respectable jobs as well okay. thank you very much uh, thank you very much dr hemant and before we go to question answer se uh, sessions uh, i'm sure devinder is also ready with so many questions and his observations and perhaps his remarks but i'll come to him at last so devinder let me allow to take uh, questions first from our scholars and finally you can conclude huh? so yeah ramesh babu you can unmute yourself i have allowed everybody okay first ramesh then dhaneshwar and thereafter parul if there is any question then surya okay and and be be very short and precise in your questions okay sure sir yeah sir this is really a very uh, uh, good talk on the on the topic and really it has brought two important things one is uh, social uh, entrepreneurship for the rural india and also uh, the it more first phase uh, startups in the urban area so my point is here most of the people who are in the rural areas uh, uh, how best they can use this technology for sustaining uh, by 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 sustaining the social entrepreneurship by using the local resources so for this uh, how would this uh, venture capital would help them to uh, start these uh, uh, these entrepreneurship that is the thing i want to know from you 
thank you very much for the uh, appreciation. And uh, let me answer you your question. Uh, uh, let's see village from a different perspective. There are two things which actually every village brings about. One is the technology, homegrown local solutions of some technology. And second is the product which actually is made by these villages, villages people. See the two different things. Now what we say is over here is the technology like traditional medicines or any other thing which has a potential to come into the market they themselves can become a brand. Now there are many initiatives by many agencies and by startups as well. They, these venture capitalists directly approach these villages and help them to grow. This is one way of thinking. Let me tell you Jawaharlal Nehru University, this AIC JNUFI, the incubator which we are working in, as also a motive of rural and social entrepreneurship. The idea which we are carrying along is to scout, to identify, scout and bring them to the fold of uh, this incubator and give them a platform to be launched. That means we devise not only technologies, but if they have some kind of services or if there's some kind of product, a e-commerce platform can can be a biggest market. We can they, their products can approach to any part of the country using e-commerce platform, and the technology which is devised for their indigenous problem can become a solution worldwide, globally, in different parts of the country as well. So these rural entrepreneurs are allowed now allowed to come on a bigger platform. So that's why these incubators and accelerators play a major role in identifying and scouting them to a bigger market. So that's the initiative. Okay, Dhaneshwar. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, this is very nice presentation on IT based uh, uh, like business entrepreneurship and startup program. So one way, uh, this is the pandemic and uh, only that online or in artificial intelligence uh, sustain uh, the market system in this situation. But my question is that, uh, like to connecting out uh, uh, paper, like do we need any economic reform uh, over 1991 economic policies? Like, uh, can we imagine uh, a sustainable and inclusive startup program for the betterment of the society, uh, not only in in an exclusive way that should be inclusive, like to catching all the section of the people. One way you are saying it is uh, like uh, of one for all. Can you make some inclusive uh, provision in it, or how we can by by cutting the LPG liberalization, privatization, and globalization? We can imagine a, a another era of uh, like self-sustained economy in India. So this is my question. Uh, thank you very much for uh, your question. Uh, let me answer you. Uh, if you talk about reforms, you must have heard about uh, 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 from our uh, honorable finance minister and government has released 2000 crores Two lakh crores of uh, uh, economical package and if you see the larger chunk has gone to small scale msme industries which are into the manufacturing so government is now going towards manufacturing let us not forget that india's biggest advantage is its population the population is not only educated but if small amount of training is given they can do wonders and this the whole world appreciates and acknowledges this power of india and not only that we for a self sustainable situation we our domestic market is so vibrant and so versatile that we don't require uh, uh, anyone else to produce some indigenous good for us so that vibrancy, which actually we brings along with the population dividend itself. So if we consider the products and the line of services in Indian context, our domestic market is enough to create a self-sustainable business models for ourselves. 
and no doubt the type and the quality of work if you look at the textile industry of late by the march 2000 uh, 2020 we were not having a single unit to create this ppe kit and if you read today's report from the government we are the second largest producer of ppe kits in india in the world so that means we have got this potential which is still unexplored and if we explore at the larger extent definitely our population our trained manpower our younger generation and our knowledge base can overcome any situation globally or locally and we have to learn to how to solve our indigenous problem by ourselves we should not be looking at europe or uk or us to solve our problems we can create our own solutions for example let me tell you this you will be amazed to know that in this pandemic situation we were not able to devise a single vaccine or something up till now do you know the reason the reason is we don't know our population at all biologically now their icmr has taken initiative in keeping the data of the indian patients within india itself and not to release it to any other country now in in the coming time maybe we'll be world leaders in the healthcare technologies as well so for self self sustainability we don't require any other global market we are our markets are versatile enough dynamic enough to solve or give sustainable sustainability to our startups as well yeah uh, parul unmute yourself parul uh good afternoon sir it's really very nice to hear you and very nice presentation well i have in a concern actually at one point of time you were sharing about the status of uber drivers that it is getting increased because they are working under some firm uh it's not a it's not a question kind of thing actually it is a concern which developed during the talks with the uber driver because i frequently use it and i came to know that actually somehow they are again entering into a kind of a vicious circle of inequality because they share that there is an a middle man there is a kind of autonomy and they don't have that kind of an a satisfaction which we really look in look after relating it with a kind of a respect i mean so somehow i feel like uh, there is a like oh, there is an a rigid system when we think of like investing and there is need of more hand holding uh, uh, in in terms of investment so i just want you to i mean show some light on it like how you look at it actually and um, because i'm not able to get the concept of respect in that sense uh good afternoon and thank you very much for your question let me tell you two things over here um every market has some saturation point if you look at it in a broader sense right when we talk about getting respect in that context and we always talk about respect in the society and the respect of society means that now the the do be becoming a driver is no more a derogatory kind of a job this is what is called i always called a self respect now they are more in front. now the your question that they are getting into the vicious cycle of credit and other things let me tell let, let me tell you what's happening actually now when there when there was a uh, this unfolding of this uber and ola company in in the country the huge amount of people and large large number of people started investing in buying cars which are of different rates and different scenarios so they are buying them on loans and these loans are paid by driver itself through the company and these companies are helping them to get the credit loans now slowly and steadily what started happening that their market started becoming saturation because everybody started putting up because we are in large number and we are having more population which is coming into these ports because everybody wants to own a scenario where they used to have cars if they don't want to if they are not able to buy the car like the auto rickshaw mafia which actually happened uh, used to happen in this country where there is always a middleman who buys some 10 cent uh, 20 30 40 uh, auto rickshaws and give them to on the rent this kind of things was happening now the same started happening in the ola and uber as well so now what happened 
from uh, getting into the empowering mode of individual this started getting into the hands of some uh, hypocrite or some money lending people we started buying bulk uh, cars in bulk and started giving it to the drivers and the driver involvement is merely a credit kind of a system they have to give rent or transportation thing now government has started changing this now they have brought a change in policy as well that nobody can buy a bulk system and put them onto the roads and giving to them because what is happening these ola and ubers are also also getting saturation in terms of number of cars because they have no ceilings and in some cities because of this transportation problem government has started putting up ceilings in the number of taxis they can fly on the roads so this became an earlier they allowed it to uh, it to happen now what happened when they allowed it the number has already gone increased the uh, prescribed limit of the or the capacity of the roads when the government came up with a policy that this amount of uh, uh, vehicles can fly the the drivers which actually already they have bought them came into the credit loan kind of a pressure they have to repay their loans and they started selling their cars at the lower prices and there they entered into the vicious cycle of getting into the loans all we can do all the government can do because for their rescue government has to come up with some policies of driving this ola and uber not to have a mass lending of the uh, vehicles but allow individual owners of these vehicles to become uh, a part of this company so actually if you remember these money which you actually transact to the driver goes to the driver and not to the company but a part and chunk to goes to the company the company says we don't have any hold on the buying and the lending or the credit of the driver and these lenders started putting a bulk amount giving number of taxis on the credit basis so that's why they, we are going in that vicious cycle which the auto rickshaw ma mafia used to have so we the government has to devise some kind of policy where we can put up a ceiling that nobody should be able to do that and for that we need to have initiatives from the government we cannot do much but yes we need to educate people on the type of credit loans and the type of which the drawbacks which these credit loans can bring in so there we cannot do much but market is saturating we all know but slowly and steadily we have to bring them out of this problem as well okay one last question surya yes sir uh, sir uh, this is very good